Welcome back to an exciting new week of Professional Wrestling, the podcast. You know who he is, but we'll introduce him anyways. He is the one and only professional wrestler, Van Landon, wrestling all over Ontario, collecting gold and leaving bodies in the dust. Jonathan A. Cohen, your host, author of that book, The Bible 3.0, The Six Commandments of the Chosen Life. Get your copy, audiobook, ebook, physical book, whatever form you want to listen to it and read it and discover your chosen life, the life systems you need to be where you need to be in life. And I can tell you, writing that book, living that book, brought me here. And I can talk about one of my most favorite subjects. Hi, everybody. This is podcasting you know van you want to be a really good podcaster you should talk directly into the mic and try not to tap your hands thanks everybody that's a learning tree moment that is a learning tree moment and i appreciate the tip i of course under the learning tree right now but yes we're talking learning tree this gentleman right up here look at that smile million dollar smile and in my opinion million dollar gimmick once again jericho strikes gold i love the learning tree right now but let's be fair about something let's call it what it is he did watch nxt and watch the schism okay this is kind of a take on the schism you know one root no what was it one branch four branches one foundation i don't know whatever the heck they called it but this is kind of schism-ish, which means a fourth member is going to come to the learning tree. I like the idea because, look, Jericho was going down real fast, right? He has these issues online that people are kind of questioning. The Jericho Appreciation Society imploded. I love the JS. It was great. You know, no more Judas anymore. So what does Chris Jericho do? I'm just going to reinvent myself yet again. All right, you hate me. So, you think you hate me now, I'll be the most obnoxious I can be and make you hate me some more. And man, you all hated the schism. So this whole tree thing kind of works for me, right? Let's be a learning tree. And one of the first people, let's be frank here. Okay, let's go step by step. So first of all, Chris Jericho at this point doing a whole bunch of nothing, right? You had Kenny Omega, it was supposed to be the Golden Jets. That imploded real quick, right? You had uh, Jericho Hook, what, whatever they called themselves. <laughs> yeah. That was terrible. First of all, anybody that Hook touches, it don't work because Hook don't talk. Don't let this guy talk ever again, by the way, if you're AW. Then you bring him on and look, then work with Jericho. I don't know what he's doing with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe lost the belt and he went from being the heavyweight champion of the world to hook's big brother like what the heck is going on samoa joe but chris jericho said to himself yeah i'm going down the toilet real fast i better come up with a gimmick well i ain't gonna be a face anytime soon they hate me i'm gonna make them hate me some more let's do the learning tree so let's start off with member number one chris jericho i don't think jericho had anything to lose at this point he was just so bad as it was they're booing him as it is let's have him boo some more i think jericho had nothing to lose. And you know what? I think he's doing a great job with it. Absolutely. Uh, the leader of reinvention is Chris Jericho. He's always been finger on the pulse when it comes to his audience reactions and what is sort of the lay of the land wherever he is, whether it was WWE, whether it's AEW. He knows what's going on. And for him to dive headfirst into the hate and give them something to really be mad about his expertise you know everyone thinks that uh the jas the inner circle fell under chris jericho's learning tree yeah you call it a learning tree now i am the learning tree and these people are going to listen to me because i do know better and this is the way to do this and all of that and yeah jericho's leaned right into it i think it's money you can piss on chris jericho as much as you want but look at each of the members he touched I would be sending thank you cards every day if I were them to Chris Jericho. Daniel Garcia, how you doing there, buddy? You're going to be winning a belt pretty soon. You're going to be thanking him, right? Sammy Guevara, all these guys. Matt Menard is now the commentator on Rampage, Collision, wherever the heck they put him, right? 
uh the guy with the mustache uh <laughs> cool hand luke and whatever the heck his name is so he's off got ruby soho pregnant there got something going but he had a gimmick going for a little while right with saray and all that bottom line is this we can hate chris jericho but it works and these people are dying for attention let's go now to the first member the redwood big bill big bill doing a whole bunch of nothing right he was a tag team champion not that long ago with Buddy, right? And Buddy's off injured, or I don't know if he's going to be going to WWE or what the heck is happening, right? He's kind of hiding over there. Big Bill doesn't have much going on. He had that one uh, street fight match that it was it was horrible. Let's just be honest, call it what it was. It was pretty brutal. I believe it was actually against Jericho, if I'm not mistaken, right? That one uh, arena AW fight. The big Bill's like, man, I need something. Chris Jericho calls him up. Big Bill, you got the look. You got everything. But nobody's utilizing you properly. Would you like to join in my faction? Contrary to what anybody thinks, go look at the AEW roster, okay? 90% of it's not being utilized. Chris Jericho calls up any of them. They're like, yes, please. So Big Bill's the first one to sign up. And we're seeing a different side of Big Bill. He's funny. He's awkward. But he needs learning. It's true. I think Big Bill's career much better off under the learning tree. Absolutely. You you look at where he was. Exactly. Ricky Starks, tag team champion, fizzled off to nothing. He lost the belt, fizzled off to nothing. And, and logistically, it makes sense. Anybody who Chris Jericho puts under his wing, or in this case, learning tree succeeds whether it's through tv time through being able to show off that they're actually entertaining you're you're absolutely right and for big bill somebody who former wwe fans would remember from enzo and Cass, knows that big bill can and has gotten over hugely with the audience of the past and this just allows him to prove that once again and the redwood's a pretty funny nickname Oh, it fits. Yeah. It fits. Absolutely. You're in the l learning tree, and he's a red wood. Makes sense. I didn't understand the pairing with Ricky Starks at all. It was just like, let's throw two guys together doing a bunch of nothing. Starks is now a heel. What the heck's going on? You knew Starks was going to break away regardless. This was a very temporary arrangement. So we got Big Bill. Now we need more disciples. The bounty hunter, Brian Keith, I didn't see that coming. But he gives you that Ron Simmons. That's what you call it, the Ron Simmons effect. Bam. You know? Damn. So he comes in. Don't disrespect Chris Jericho. You know, like, he just comes in right at the end there and always sticks something in. Uh, I didn't realize, first of all, how short Brian Keith was. I know compared to Big Bill, everybody's short. But when he was on his own coming out, he had a bigger effect than he is. He's not a very tall guy. Great wrestler needs something this is his first kind of faction uh I, I assume they didn't take brian keith by the ear and force him to do this i think he signed up very willingly for this hey and, and that's what wrestlers do when they see opportunities like this they jump at it because in wrestling opportunities do not come up often and for somebody like the bounty hunter brian keith if if aew said forget that you're a bounty hunter we need you to dress like a horse and you're a horse wrestler now I'm sure he would jump at that opportunity, too, because it's going to pay. But for him to now be getting this TV time, and I keep going back to that, but that's really the premise of this whole stable. It's going to be something for Brian Keith to now get over with a whole audience that if this audience doesn't watch independent wrestling, they don't know how good Brian Keith really was. They just know him as the new guy in AEW. This is going to be an opportunity for him to shine now. You know, with AW, the problem with Tony Khan, I love the dude to pieces, but there's times I feel like he's like a kid at the candy store, right? And he's a kid at the toy store, and he gets his new candy, he gets his toys. He's like, buy me five boxes of this. I promise I'll eat it every day. And as soon as it's something new, that other stuff just goes into the shelves. And that's how he treats his wrestlers. Remember, I, I haven't seen them in so long. They're barely there anymore, but they were the foundation for a little while on TV, the Undisputed Kingdom, is that the name of them? That was them, yes. So remember when that was a thing and they were unstoppable? Uh, that fizzled out pretty fast. And we need somebody to take, you know what? Might as well be the learning tree at this point. But why are the Undisputed Kingdom not the it factor today? 
maybe it has something to do with Adam Cole, you know, being Professor X in a wheelchair, not being cleared to compete. Uh, maybe it has something to do with just the audience and the reaction to the team of Taven and Bennett. Uh, and Roderick Strong is somebody who undeniably can hold his own wherever you put him. I don't know what the issue is there. And then you got Big War Dog, who has had Goldberg-like runs, who has been losing, who has been beat up by guys, like been whipped by MJF. He's Wardlow has been at the highest of highs and lowest of lows in AEW since 2019. It's just a perfect storm of what's going on here. You got the leader who's injured and can't wrestle. You got the one sort of solo wrestler, the tag team that you're unsure of. And this guy that should be a killer who's not killing people. I think they're waiting till Adam Cole's healed so they can have the MJF uh, feud. They're putting that on the back burner right now. But it, is Wardlow and Madcap Moss the same person? <laughs> have you seen them in the same room? Never. <laughs> they literally have the same circumstances, the same issues. If they are truly two different people, why can't they join up in one federation to be a tag team? Because I think they could help each other a lot because they both need something. Hey, two big, meaty men. That's what that would be. That, and That's the name of the tag team, two meaty men. Hey, wrestling needs more meaty men slapping meat like that. That's for sure. And those are two big hosses. So if we're going to go based on the schism, we're going to need four members here. So the question is, are we going to bring a female into this? Are we going to bring in a male into this? Does it matter? And do we want to have somebody who's more jobberish or do we need to have a little more oomph into it? One name that now sticking out because you brought him into the equation. Does Wardlow need the learning tree? I think that would be the best case scenario because then Wardlow wouldn't have to play in the Undisputed Kingdom's case fourth or fifth fiddle. If he was with the learning tree, he would be able to work with Chris on a more one-to-one -one basis. Leave Bill, leave Brian. They can be a tag team. They can run the learning tree tag division. Have Jericho, have Wardlow. Give him the guidance. And why shouldn't Chris Jericho care to, to elevate Wardlow? He, that fits right under the learning tree's sort of uh, mission statement, I find. And he's just not executing. He gets close, 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 and then he's squashed. And then we just don't see him again for weeks. Yeah. And we go up and down the AW roster. There's so many people like Trent Beretta would have been an ideal guy for the learning tree. But you know what? I'm really happy with him and the Don Callis family. I like him wearing the dress shirt. I, I'm a huge T Trent Beretta fan. Oh, so my. I did like the idea of an Orange Cassidy heel turn. I still think that should come at some point. I think he's kind of floundering right now. But you know what, Trent? You're just as good, if not better, with Don Callis. I think it's watching, do I want to be on Don Callis' family? Or do I want to be on the learning tree? But everybody's like, it's musical chairs. If there's one thing I've learned about AEW, you want to be on TV, you need to be in a faction. Yeah, at this point, yes. That's exactly the, that's the key to the TV time. And, you know, you've seen the Don Callis family showing uh, there's there's kinks in the armor, so to speak, right? We're seeing Kyle Fletcher's getting annoyed. I think he's going face pretty, pretty soon, right? It's coming. Takeshita's still there, but I think he's getting annoyed. I think we got to get new blood into the Don Callis family, and I think we got to find us a member into the learning tree. Don't know if they're interrelated or not. Takeshita's a guy... I don't think he's ready to be a face again. I think it was a very boring face. I think we have to leave him in the Don Callis family for a while. Probably not my pick there. Fletcher's the guy who I could see. He has more face ability. He's the guy that they can have their Cody Rhodes-ish type, you know, behind cheering him that he had enough of Don Callis and, you know, his friend Will Ospreay. You could see his annoyance. So there's things to be done here. The thing with AW is they like to move the storylines sometimes a little too fast. Slow down, Tony. Simmer it. You don't have to put it on high. Simmer the dish. Simmering it for two hours sometimes cooks a lot better than cooking it on high for five minutes. Thanks, everybody. See, I just did it again. There's a learning tree moment. <laughs> I'm trying to teach Tony Khan how to run a storyline and slow burn it. Hey, a lot of those names that you said, I think, uh, I think are, are strong candidates. Takeshita, as of recording this, we know is about to be competing in the G1 in Japan for New Japan, which is about 
one month, maybe a month and a half of just grueling matches in a tournament. So Takeshita will be off of AEW TV for that whole time period. It's going to be interesting to see how the Don Callis family shakes up for that because you got Kyle Fletcher. If Mark Davis returns, there's Ozzy open back. Are they going to join with Will? Are they going to go off, do their own thing? You're absolutely right. There's a lot of cracks in that foundation. And other than Trent's, like, what are we doing here? My friend, looking where Kyle Fletcher has grown under Don Callis, considering what he was, if I'm Kyle Fletcher, I'm telling, you know what? I'm doing a Rockers, put Mark Davis through a glass window and welcome him slowly, slowly into the Don Callis family. He's got his hesitations. Put him through the window. Mark Davis, welcome to the learning tree. I, if I'm Kyle Fletcher, that's dead weight, I'm telling you. Like, you, you, you're going backwards in time, going as a barely mid-card tag team when you have the opportunity to be a more intercontinental-type champion or a continental champion, whatever the belt, all North American championship, Atlantic championship, whatever the heck they're calling it today. Kyle Fletcher has that potential. He's shown he's put on weight. He's on the uh, NXT-type diet, you know? I see. I, he's a tall guy, good-looking guy. Uh, he's dating uh, uh, Blue Sky in real life. I don't know if they're going to do anything with that or not, but I, I thought about this long and hard because they, they said that Mark Davis isn't back yet. He's still not healed. I don't see a reason for Kyle Fletcher to go back in time and do Aussie Open. I mean, yeah, you raise a great point there. That is sort of two steps forward and then five backwards because you're right. He has carved himself out as a single star currently in Ring of Honor, in his showcases in the Don Callis family now. Yeah, I mean, you're right. That would just be going backwards. And then we know what's going to happen then. Otherwise, we're going to have the Don Callis family in a six-man tag against FTR and Mark Davis because FTR always has to stick their nose into everybody's business. It's going to go down. Dude, as soon as you're the third person in a six-man tag, it's over. <laughs> so I have one other person I'm thinking uh, as far as now. It's coming into my mind because... We got some people that do a whole bunch of stuff, but a whole bunch of nothing. I'm going to give you two names that I would say are fan favorites, but are kind of floundering right now. Eddie Briscoe. Well, no, sorry. J um, Mark Briscoe, Eddie Kingston. Two potential candidates to go to the dark side. Maybe Learning Tree, probably not. Maybe Don Callis. Uh, I think we need to do something with these gents because this whole thing that like, oh, I'm the... Uh, underrated guy and i'm going above punching above my weight it's going to get stale with them too one or both i would love to see them as heels uh, and mark briscoe as of recording the ring of honor world champion i would love to see chris jericho make mark briscoe tv ready there's a famous story of when the briscoes had their wwe tryout back in whatever year it was 2010s uh that what they were told is you guys aren't cosmetically pleasing enough for the WWE. Can you believe that Mark Briscoe, you handsome devil. And so for Chris Jericho now to take that line and run it into the learning tree and say, Mark, let's dress you up. It's makeover day. It's this and that we're going to teach you how to talk properly. And Mark Briscoe's Mark Briscoe. He can't do much about it, but I think that would be, television gold the other name you mentioned eddie kingston I, I, we do know that he's out on injury currently after a, a crazy fall at a new japan show not even getting hurt in an AEW ring unfortunate but it's it's something that where does he go when he comes back now he's gonna take all this time off to heal his knees where does he go when he comes back is he gonna go to the dark side Eddie has his problems. Is he going to use this injury as fuel to get back into that negative headspace? Only time will tell. Eddie Kingston has a very short life as a face because, yeah, he had 10 million belts, but it's one of those things, you're not the best looking guy, you're not the best shape guy, it's hard. Don Callis sits down with Eddie Kingston, whispers in his ear, because now we're going to need to replace this because we're going to lose Osprey, right? We're going to lose Fletcher. Eddie Kingston, Don Callis... I think we got a good marriage going here. I like your idea of Briscoe in the suit. So how about Jericho, Redwood, the Bad Apple, right? And bring in uh, Briscoe, and they're all wearing matching suits. 
this is working. And Briscoe brings a different flavor to it because you can't just bring it. Because one of the things about the JAS, it was all jobbers all day long, right? You're seeing here now, I'm not going to say Bill and not going to say that Keith are jobbers, but these are not upper echelon guys. We're not going to see Orange Cassidy coming into the learning tree. Mark Briscoe will elevate the game, certainly. And I think we're going to need somebody on that kind of level. No more jobbers. If we're going to bring in more of the jobber guys, it's going to turn into a JS real quick and it's going to end real quick. So that's my advice to Chris Jericho. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see Mark Briscoe play that role. I think that's a perfect pairing. In two years from now, we turn on AWTV. Is the learning tree still around? Is the Don Callis family still around? As long as Don is still with AEW, I do think that there will be Don Callis representation on TV, whether or not it's the family or not. He's too connected with both Chris and Kenny that I think he is sort of Paul Heyman to WWE, Don Callis to AEW. Uh, the learning tree, to your point, they could blow this one up way too quickly or they could let it rock. I think that one's more of a 50-50 if it's here in two years. I think Jericho still will be, but maybe he's got the Jericho Appreciation Inner Circle tree at that point. Combine everything. We'll see. So riddle me this, Riddler. <laughs> so you have Osprey leave the family because it's coming. Kyle Fletcher leaves the family. That's coming. Takeshita turns on him. Don Callis is a family without a family all of a sudden. You talked about the connection with Chris Jericho. What if Don Callis becomes the fourth member of the learning tree because he's lost now and he's lost his edge. And Chris Jericho says, you know what, Don, as much as I hate you, we've been together before. Now I'm going to take you on the learning tree and I'm going to show you the ship. That would implode, obviously, at some point. But Don Callis in the learning tree... Not the worst thing in the world. Not the worst thing. Almost acting as a little sleeper spy, sort of infiltrating himself. Hey, I don't have anybody. And we know the evil things that Don had done to Chris in the past, sort of culminating to the Golden Jets. We saw what was happening there. But hey, when, when you lose it all, you go to your blood. When there's no blood, you go... To the click. You go to Chris Jericho, who's Don Callis' click. I wouldn't I wouldn't surprise me if we cut to a backstage segment, the learning tree locker room, and Don Callis is knocking on that door. I like that. How about Don Callis sitting in the locker room with his head in his hands and beside himself, and Chris Jericho comes to sit beside him and looks at him and says, Don, it's time. You know what to do. And so Chris Jericho takes him under the learning tree, rehabilitates him and you're ready for this because we know I, I think that the learning tree does have a short shelf life knowing how Chris Jericho works and Don Callis ends up taking all the members of the learning tree and becomes the Don Callis family and has a ready-made faction for himself and turns and everybody turns on Jericho and Jericho is now back to being a face and we can start this yet again and here we have a new feud there we go I fixed everything death taxes and Chris Jericho Heel to face, heel to face, heel to face. Hey, it's what happens. I like that. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. So Don Callis and Chris Jericho, I, I was hoping that Chris was going to join the Don Callis family. I thought it was a great pairing. I honestly thought Chris would have been very good in the Don Callis family. But I understand that they decided not to go that route. There's still a way. Chris, Don, think about it. Hey, I As like that. As we end today's episode, I got some good news for you if you live in Canada, because, well, besides our, you know, lovely political situation, our lovely weather and taxes and all that, but we do have wrestling on TV, but just like the States, you know, January 2025, we're going to have all our WWE programming on Netflix, yay. So we, in, in, in Ontario, at least, I think most of Canada, they are by Sportsnet. And so Sportsnet is saying, oh no, we're going to lose our wrestling properties and we're screwed because we got a lot of viewership for this. Apparently, as long as AEW stays with Warner Brothers and sports that took over the Warner Brothers properties, we're going to have AEW in January on Sportsnet, which means Rampage and Collision are actually going to have real-time slots for the public until 
AW goes to Amazon Prime, which is our prediction, this is not a bad second. Not a bad at all. I just think even you saying that, AEW on Sportsnet, and already the possibilities have just opened up for so many new viewers to the product. Not every casual household is paying for TSN2 or whatever that it's being shown on now at this point. Most casual fans don't even know what an AEW is if, they're, if they've been living under a rock or not reading you know, online and keeping up with everything. They thought, you know, Chris Jericho just retired. But for that to happen, Sportsnet, the, you know, the mecca of sports in Canada, that is a big get. And you're right. January 2025, what happens on Mondays at 8? All right, we're going to figure something out as far as the time slots go. But look, when we're in an era when people are watching poker tournaments on repeat and there's so little live sports, especially when you come into the summer, it's amazing how Major League Baseball has such a monopoly. NFL is not going on, NBA and the NHL are gone. Man, there's wrestling going out there, but in Canada, you have to pay a subscription. You can't even get it on TSN 2 or TSN 3. You got to get TSN Plus, pay eight bucks a month to get Rampage and Collision. This should be on free TV or whatever TV channels because part of why the viewership sucks because people don't have that subscription, so nobody's watching it. If it's there, it'll get at least poker numbers, I'm sure. Yeah. So it's chicken and egg thing, but AW, you're going to be smart. Listen to me. Move over to Sportsnet. Let's make it happen. Then go to Amazon Prime. Watch how WWE is going to do flourishing business from Netflix. And I'm going to tell you, AW is going to follow in line. And then Vince is going to have his new wrestling federation. They're going to get their own TV contract. And competition is good. Competition ain't bad. It's more wrestlers. Hey, you as an independent wrestler, Van Landon, when you know there's three, four, five wrestling major federations, there's more doors to open. It's a good sign for me. Plenty of places to work, plenty of opportunity out there. Opportunity is not easy to get. Companies like that, multiple companies like that, the business has never been in a more booming state than today, and tomorrow it's going to be even better. If you got the call from Chris Jericho, and you're going to look a nice astronaut, but if, <laughs> if you wanted to become, if he called you up and said, hey, do you want to become uh, a wrestler under the learning tree? We want to bring you over. How quickly are you packing your bags? Oh, I've already said yes, and I'm already <laughs> heading to Pearson right now. That's exactly the case there. Jericho, you need me. I'm there for you. Don't worry. And, and also, I will gladly listen to all the teachings that he has, learn from you, because if anybody knows what to do in wrestling and how to have that career longevity, how to constantly reinvent how to maximize your minutes, it's old Y2J. Chris, give me a call. So with Chris Jericho, Tony Khan, and the fans wanting to reach out to Van Landon, how do they reach you, Van? Go to anywhere that you get your social media, whether that's Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, Hive, Patreon, all of it. MySpace? MySpace, unfortunately, no. But everywhere else, you can find me at the Van Landon, T H E V A N L A N D O N. It's easy, just like that. Everywhere you search Van Landon, there's only one of me, and you can find me. I used to have a schnauzer named Landon. I miss him, but Van Landon, you make help me make up for that. <laughs> this has been Professional Wrestling, the podcast. We'll see you all back next week as we explore the wonderful world of WWE, AW, and everything that goes on in sports entertainment slash professional wrestling. Stay tuned.